2.4, 2.4. What have we really had with Vision OS Beta 2.4 so far? Welcome back to a vision experiment with me, Ty, talking everything Apple Vision Pro and spatial computing. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Vision OS Beta 2.4 and the updates that we've had so far. So we had the first version of it not too long ago where it released Apple Intelligence to Apple Vision Pro, which was a game changer, absolutely needed to happen, something that was greatly lacking in Vision OS from the beginning, yet understanding that this explosion of AI seemed to kind of happen towards the time where Apple were about to launch Apple Vision Pro and hadn't really fully blown up in the way it is now when they announced it back at WWDC 2023. We also got in the first beta the new guest mode, which is really, really interesting. And we'll talk about these things a little bit later. On to the second version of the beta that literally dropped yesterday for me, and we had introduction to the new spatial application, a curated library of stuff, all in spatial format. And then the last thing that we got was the Vision Pro dedicated application. These are all things that have sort of been promised by Apple as an evolution of the product and are something very welcomed but are they enough? So let's talk initially about the first beta and Apple Intelligence and the new guest mode. Now, Apple Intelligence has obviously been on other Apple products for a little while now. And most of us are aware that it's kind of been a bit meh. It's not really been setting the world alight. Apple have been a bit behind on Apple Intelligence rollout and the features are coming slowly. I do tend to use quite a lot the writing tools part of it, but realistically, I don't tend to use a lot of the other things at the moment and it is kind of lacking on having a smart Siri. So obviously these things are going to trickle down towards Vision Pro and now that Vision Pro has some kind of AI, it's only going to hopefully get better. But this is the key that the AI that we have in our smartphones or our MacBooks is very different to what we're going to have in what is a spatial computer. Apple Vision Pro's kind of whole point is that it does stuff spatially. And so with this, we're really going to need a very intelligent Siri and a very intelligent uh, aid in using Vision Pro with AI in ways that you just would not do with an iPhone, iPad or MacBook. It needs to be able to do things like be able to organize your applications, be able to put them into folders, to be able to move them and neatly tidy them up around you in a spatial way. It needs to be able to give you more information about what you're seeing in the world around you. And this is something that would be really, really impactful for the platform in general, but just because the competitors are going to do it if Apple aren't going to do it. We've already seen that Project Muhan that's coming from Samsung and the collaboration with Google and Android XR is going to have the ability to spatially give you information with Gemini that currently Siri just couldn't do. And it is really, really cool to be able to utilize the ability to see the world around you and the cameras and give you some information about that world around you. Say you're looking through pass-through and you see a car as an example, you can ask Gemini within Project Muhan's headset, what is that car? And it can tell you. If you're within applications within that headset, the understanding that I have from watching Marcus Brownlee's review of the product is that it can actually tell you about information within the apps that you've got open tidy up the apps and lots of other sort of features that you kind of need in a spatial computer AI. This is something that hopefully we will see evolve off the back of Apple intelligence just evolving in general. 
but Apple really are chasing their tail with this. And I'm genuinely hoping that they kind of get back up to speed sooner rather than later. Now, just to be clear, this is absolutely not me trying to be ultra critical about what Apple are doing here. What I am trying to do is kind of speak my own thoughts on all of these different new things that we've got. And when I say, are they enough? really going to be open and honest about whether they are good or are they just a stopgap for what we're going to get in Vision OS 3. If you did like this video, I really appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. It's really important so that I know you like the content that I'm doing and it really incentivizes me to make more of it. So with that, I promise I will give you the best quality content possible all about Apple Vision Pro, spatial computing, XR in general, and plenty, plenty more. And with that, let's just get stuck in to the guest mode for Apple Vision Pro Beta 2.4. So guest mode was a funny one. I did, previous to this new way of doing it, found it kind of janky. It wasn't the most ideal way of being able to share my Vision Pro with people around me the annoyance of uh, being able to sort of mirror and then the mirror casting kind of fall out was really infuriating. And now, if you didn't know already, Apple have introduced in the beta, which will be available for the more public release in April, this ability to basically just give your Vision Pro to somebody else, place it on their head, and they'll be able to see a little prompt underneath the pin. So normally what would happen is, is that if you were to put the Vision Pro on somebody's head, if you're unaware of this, it would, without activating guest mode, would basically just bring up the main user's pin number, pin code, or retinal eye scan. Because the guest couldn't use that, or if they did, it wouldn't be synchronized to both the eye tracking and hand tracking that's been set for the main user, it just would not work. So what you had to do is go through this guest mode, go through to control center and do it that way. And basically you then had a bit of a annoying way, should I say, of getting to guest mode. But because we knew no different, that was the only way to do it. Now Apple have made this a lot easier because when you give your headset over to a guest, they basically put the headset on and you will get the pin appear but what you also get is a prompt underneath saying, would you like to enter guest mode? Press the digital crown once. What that does is it then sends a message to the closest iPhone, the main user's iPhone, to the Vision Pro, which you expect that you wouldn't be just leaving your Vision Pro with any old person, but you would basically get a pop-up that would say, enter guest mode, and that would be on your iPhone. It would show you which apps you would like to give that user authority to open and use and have access to. Or you can just say access to all. And once you've done that, they're literally starting guest mode straight away. They'll go through their eye and hand tracking calibration, and then they're in to enjoy Vision Pro much quicker. Now, do I feel like that is a great upgrade? It is much better than before but it's not quite the upgrade I think the majority of us are hoping for who are Vision Pro owners that want to share the experience of a spatial computer that you've spent a lot of money on with your friends and family. So it wouldn't surprise me with Apple that this is the beginning of a stopgap to be able to start to really hone that experience for guest users. And starting with this, it makes it a lot easier for the main user to be able to share that experience and get them into Vision Pro quicker. I think with Vision OS 3, I'd like to hope that they've listened to the community and are trying their absolute best to offer multi-guest access to Vision Pro so that if it is your friends or your family that you are going to be demoing this to or sharing it with, that they can have their own profile that they can hop onto without the need for you to give them access through guest mode. On to the newest update to the beta 2.4. We had part two drop literally on Friday. And with that, we got two new things. We got the new Spatial Galleries app, which most of this stuff is very much a curation of what Apple feel is some of the best spatial video available and photos available. So what you have there is things from, say, Red Bull, 
uh, or severance, which are things that you would never get to see yourself unless you were part of the crew. You get to see some of the sets and some of the actors. There's so many different things in there, and I'm almost certain it's going to change pretty regularly. What I'm really hoping, though, is that Apple are really listening to everyone when they say that they want a place and a platform to share their own spatial content. And I'm hoping that they kind of give us, the Vision Pro users, the opportunity to be able to share some of the best that we have and have it basically be looked at for going up there as like the best of the best content. I, for one, have been shooting spatial content before I even owned Vision Pro and genuinely would love to kind of get my name up there in lights a little bit for some of the cool stuff that I've been shooting with my iPhone. And who knows, maybe in the future it can advance out to something of a larger platform where content creators can share not only spatial videos and photos, but maybe even Apple immersive level stereo 180 kind of media to the wider community. Something that obviously Apple would judge to be good enough, but definitely something that I think a lot of people out there would like to do. The final thing that released with the second beta 2.4 was the new Vision Pro dedicated application, much like the Apple Watch application that we've had for a very, very long time. Vision Pro finally has its own, which is great because what it will allow you to do is be able to discover when new Apple immersive media, maybe potentially new applications, and Apple may even kind of highlight things much like they do when you open up the App Store to be able to give you an idea of things you might be missing or uh, big titles on the App Store that may be worth your while to download. Experience is a key on Vision Pro, so being able to be guided to where some of the best experiences are is a welcome thing for me as a Vision Pro user. Now, this video wasn't necessarily to sort of really guide you through these things and show you these things and how they worked. There are plenty of videos out there already that will give you guidance on how to use the new guest mode, how to use Apple Intelligence and more. And if you do want me to do a video like that, I'll happily do one for you. All you've got to do is write in the comments down below your thoughts about Vision OS 2.4 Beta right now if you have access to it through being a developer. And um, your thoughts so far about the upgrades. I personally am happy we get more and we haven't got to pay for more. I feel like Apple have got a lot more up their sleeves that they're obviously going to tell us most likely at WWDC 20. Five. And uh, realistically, we're going to see this gradually roll out into April to the broader public in the final release. I'm just really hoping that we're going to get a lot more interesting things from Apple that we can use our Vision Pros for. Because at the moment, I'm using it more than enough, but I'm always excited for what's to come. And I think everybody else is probably the same, whether you own a Vision Pro or not, whether your desire, if you don't own one, is to get one and then see how it fits into your daily life, giving you the idea of what's coming or what's already here now, hopefully will give you a little bit more inspiration come the day you get your own. And if you are a Vision Pro user already, I really do hope that the things that I'm creating are good for you and the knowledge that you really want about Apple Vision Pro and how to use it more or get the best out of it. And also, I want you to join the community in sharing your opinions about your experiences using Vision Pro. That's the most important thing, and you can do that down in the comments section. If you did enjoy this video, I really would appreciate you just tapping that like button. It's super easy. It takes two seconds to do, and you've made me a very happy person. And if you want to make me even happier, like almost to the point of jumping out of my chair, just hit the subscribe button and the bell as well, because that's when you'll know when next video drops. So with that, this video is done. And let's see what we get in maybe the beta three, four, who knows more. We'll find out. I'll catch you for another video really soon.